stand in the place where you live. I bet you've never done it before. Now face north. Stand in the place where you work. I bet you've never done this before. Stand west. It's a song by R.E.M. It was back in the 80s. I used to love R.E.M., but the song never made sense to me. It never did. So I looked it up, and it was supposed to be based on, like, the monkeys and Archie and just a slapstick, silly song. But as I was, as I was preparing this week, this song played over and over in my head, and I thought, how often do we stand, but we don't know what we're standing for or what direction we're headed in? And then I thought, wow, R.E.M. wrote a song back in 1988 for me today that I can use as an example. We're going to finish up our sermon series on standing or standing firm this week. But I just thought it was interesting, just the concept of stand, to stand, to stand up for, to stand against. Um, There was this example I was reading in an article. It said, Archibald Naismith tells that at the Battle of Waterloo, when the fight became at its worst, an officer galloped up to the commander, the Duke of Wellington, and said, my captain, we are being destroyed. We need reinforcements. Quickly. The Duke simply replied to him, tell the men to stand. The The officer galloped away to relay this message. Shortly later, the same messenger came galloping back. Again, Wellington simply said, Tell them to stand. Very soon, another officer with the same message and same request came to Wellington, and his response was, I have no help to send to you. Tell them to stand. The officer saluted and replied, You will find us there, sir. When the battle was fought and won, the Duke found that each one of those men were at their post. Unfortunately, they were dead. But they stood, and they laid down their life for the victory. What does it mean to stand? This whole series uh, has been to stand firm. Now, I found it very interesting, as I really, really dug more deep into this, is that the Greek word is steko. Now, this is the root word. And, And so I dug into all my Greek resources. Yep, I pulled out the Greek Bible. I pull out the analytical Greek, and then I finally figured out that I'm not smart enough to remember four years of Greek, so I pulled out my interlinear, which is the Greek with the NASB and the NIV, which is very helpful. And I found that most times that steko or some derivative of would be translated to stand Firm, but the original word was to stand. Original Bibles that were written were to stand. And I found that interesting that we've added that worm firm, but we really don't need it. When you are told to stand, you know what you're supposed to do. Not sit. Not run. Not turn your back. You are to stand. And I thought about this and I couldn't find it. I looked all over And I think I know now where it is. I was going to put on my my Taekwondo outfit from 1983 to 1985. I was trying to become a black belt. And I still have the top somewhere. And I remember that that when, when I first started that, we didn't learn how to punch. We didn't learn how to kick. We didn't learn how to block. We didn't learn any of the cool like nunchucks and things of that nature. You know what we learned? how to stand. And when you walked up to someone, you presented yourself in a firm way. And then you would take the back stance or a front stance or a, I don't know, crouching cat or tiger or something. I don't remember that one. But I remember that we were taught to stand and how to stand. I think of boxers, when they stand, they don't stand like this. Boxers stand like this at the ready for the battle ahead. Stako, the word, means to stand, and it means in a military stance. It means to be prepared for the battle that is ahead of you. This whole sermon series has been that you would learn how to stand against the devil. 
You are fighting no one else. You may not like people in general, or some people in general, or you might be mad at some people in general, but your battle is not against people. Your battle is not against anyone in this church. You're not, your battle is not against anyone in another church. Your battle is not against people in Satan's church. Your battle is against principalities that are not of this earth. Your battle is to stand firm against the devil, not people. People just make bad choices, and you're all part of that group because we all make bad choices. Some are seem we think in our mind are worse than others, but they're still bad choices. So our battle is not against them, our battle is against whom they follow. Because that same person whom they follow is trying to make us follow them as well. See, today I want you to walk out of here in a stance to be prepared for the battle ahead. I want you to stand. I don't want you to quit. I don't want you to back down. I don't want you to turn your back. I don't want you to run away. I want you to be prepared for the battle that is at hand right now. Because there is a battle waging for your very soul whether you realize it or not. Every day you are confronted with tens of hundreds of thousands of decisions to either make the right decision or the wrong decision, to make the decision for God or to make the decision for yourself and for the world. Today, as I finish, I'm, I'm absolutely fired up because we've got to learn how to stand. Louisiana governor, great example, has said, I will take a stand for God. Now, I'm sure there's many people in the world that are out of their bloody mind, and I don't care. Because here's the deal. I don't care if I offend someone if I'm allowed to speak of Christ. If they find it offensive, they don't have to listen. I don't have to listen if I don't agree with someone else. I'm willing to listen and debate, but unfortunately, we don't debate anymore in this country. We don't talk. We don't try to understand each other. There has been lines that have been drawn in the sand, and I tell you where I stand. I stand with Jesus. I'm not standing with the world anymore, and if that makes me against the world, then so be it. Because I refuse to give up my God for their belief. And if we're not willing to do that, then we're not taking a stand. If we're not willing to confront the wrong against the right, then we are not taking a stand. And today I'm asking you to take a stand for Jesus. Because when Christians take a stand, the world can change. When Christians sit down and say, well, it's their right. And here's the deal, it is. It is their right. It's your right as well. It's your right to stand. If you have your Bibles, I've done a sermon series on all this, but I'm going to reiterate it because I want to put it in a different perspective. For our Second Chronicles 20 verse 17 says, Stand firm, hold your position, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Today, when you leave this church, the Lord will be with you. The Lord is in you. The Lord is through you. If you think that someone can take down Jesus, you're wrong. They already tried. They killed him. They put him on a tree. And guess what? He arose and he took death with him. Death shall be no more to those who believe in him. But we've got to take a stand. We've got to be strong. We can't step back. I'm not asking you to go stand in front of a steamroller because guess what? You're going to die. But I am asking you to stand in front of the steamroller of Satan because Christ says, I will be there with you. Open your Bibles to Ephesians. I know you all know this, but I want to highlight some things. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Paul starts writing to the Ephesian church to finish up his, his, his book, if you will, to them, his letter. And he starts with this, finally, 
culminating all the last five chapters and nine verses, finally, stand strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. How do you stand? Strength of Jesus in his might. Can you stand against the devil on your own? No. You're going to lose. You're going to lose bad. Because he's going to beat you up. He's going to spit on you. He's going to kick you down. But he tried that with Jesus, remember? R remember when Jesus got flogged? And he could have cried out for a thousand angels to come down or 10,000 angels or 10 million angels to wipe everybody out? He didn't. He stood. Remember when they put the uh, beam of the cross on his arms? That, that was the typical. He wouldn't have taken the whole cross with him. A lot of times they would have just taken the cross beam, but it would have been several hundred pounds. It was solid wood. After he had been flogged, after he had been beaten, after he had been spit at, after he had been cussed at, and as he's carrying this block of wood, several hundred pounds, after being all of that, they're still spitting on him. They're still cursing at him. Did he back down? He stood firm. When they laid him down and put him on top of the cross and began driving eight-inch spikes through his wrists and his feet, did he back down? Did he turn his back? No, he stood firm. When they pierced his side, when he cried out, Father, forgive them, forgive, for they know not what they do, did he back down? When he died and they pulled him off and they put him in a cave, did he back down? No, but he rose on the third day and he said, I kicked your butt, Satan. Leave my people alone. We heard that too, didn't we? Hey, Pharaoh, leave my people alone. See, God has always got our back when we stand firm in him. When we just stand. It doesn't even have to be firm. I'll be honest, there's sometimes that I'm trying to stand and my knees get wobbly. And no, I won't give you the illustration of pulling my pants up. It doesn't say that you won't get weak. It doesn't say that it ain't going to hurt. It doesn't say that, that you, oh, the whole time you're going to look like Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk and be up here, ooh. It does say that when you have the courage and the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, you can stand firm with the knowledge that Satan cannot touch you. He can try. In fact, if we keep going, it says, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand against the devil's th schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. It's not against your neighbor. You may, he may not mow like you want him to. He may not weed whip or use uh, uh, pesticides like you want him to. His house may be a mess. Uh, I, last week, I finally went and dad, mowed my dad's place. Hadn't mowed it all year. Usually about a 40-minute job. Four hours later, I was still going back and forth trying to get those stupid weeds that are like a stalk sticking up with a little ball on top. But I had noticed that the neighbor on the one side, he had already mowed about five foot into dad's side. Like, I don't want your weeds in my yard. So I, I didn't see him, but I, I know he was probably very angry at me for not taking care, better care of dad's lawn. I just hadn't had a chance to get over there yet. See, uh, my battle's not with him. I appreciated him mowing what he did. I wish it, I, I almost thought about putting like five bucks on his door and say, hey, if you can come over about another 10 feet, that'd be great. See, our battle is not against things here. We may think it is. We may be mad at our government. We may be mad at the government of other countries. Our battle is not necessarily against with them. Our battle is who is pulling their puppet strings. For your battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan is battling for you as you sit here right now. There is a battle going on for you. 
It is a spiritual battle. Now, I, I'm not in the spirit war, world. I, I can't picture this. I mean, I've said it before. I pictured like Michael and some of the cool angels. I, I hope they're the cool angels. I don't, like up there with like flaming darts taking down demons as they're shooting their flaming darts back at them. See, the battle is going on up here, but the battle for me is right here. This is where the battle starts. See, the battle is in my mind. Whether I accept Jesus and I follow Jesus and I seek Jesus or whether I accept the world and seek the world. And it's no different with your neighbor or that guy down the street or, or the government or anyone else. Their battle is right here. And who have they accepted? That's where the battle is. That's why when you pray, you pray for God's strength. You don't pray for your own. I, I mean, I know I'm a pretty impressive 185 year old or 185 pound man. 185 year old, that's kind of what I'm feeling like right now. I'll just be honest. So, how do we do this? Well, first, I think the key that we have to look at is back in, in chapter or verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Do not bite, fight the devil alone. You will lose. But the Lord already beat him. So how do we do that? Therefore, put on the full armor of God so you will be able to resist uh, in e it, the ugh, so you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand. I'm not going to add the firm because I'm going to, I'm just stako here. I just want you to stand. I, I don't want you to turn your back on Jesus. I don't want you to look and go, well, I wanted Jesus to help me and I wanted Jesus to do this. Jesus is not a genie in a bottle. We worship him. He doesn't worship us. And there is a plan for each and every one of you in your life. And when we seek him, that plan will come to fruition. When we don't seek him, we've gone rogue and we've gone off on our own. We must stand firm if we expect to win the battle. So how do you stand firm? How do you stand firm um, when the person that's coming after you is more powerful, more cunning, more deceitful. How do you stand firm when you believe that you can do it on your own? Well, first off, you have to understand humility is the most important part of Christianity. None of you are strong enough. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much you can bench, bench press. I don't care how much you can curl. I don't care how many pull-ups, chin-ups, or push-ups you can do. You are weak when it comes to the devil. The only way that you will be prepared for this battle is to stand on God's word. To stand in the righteousness of Christ himself. To stand in the strength of the one who already beat death. He starts verse 14, same way. Stako. Stand. Stand. What does it mean to stand? It means that you are not afraid. You may be afraid, and I'll be honest, sometimes I get afraid. Now, I'm not talking about things here. I've been in, I've been in houses that I couldn't see a thing. I've had fire raging over the top of my head. I've had floors collapsing. I've, been, I've fallen off of roofs. I've been in battles that I could not see so now I know with Jesus, those battles prepared me for the battle now that I can't see. And I will stand. I will not be afraid now. Why? Because I have Jesus. Will I falter? Yep. Will I fail? Yep. Will I make stupid decisions? Yep. But I will stand on Jesus. I will be filled with the spirit of Jesus. I will take the courage of Jesus to have eight inch spikes put through his wrists. Regardless of what happens to me here, I know that this world is my temporary home. I am an alien here. I don't belong here anymore. 
When I accepted Jesus, this, did, this became my, my, I don't even want to say summer home because summer homes are usually somewhere you look forward to going to. But I long to be in my forever home. So how do I stand? Well, first off, girding your loins with truth. Oof. I got to tell the truth all the time. How many times did you ever get yelled at as a kid? Don't lie. Don't lie. You told me the truth. Don't lie. See, the, the interesting thing is, is, as a kid, I could try to lie to my parents, and I might get away with it. When you look at God and say, I tried to lie, he goes, yeah, no, don't be stupid. I know every, I know the hair on your head. Are you, you're not going to lie to me. I'm God. So how about this? Stand truthful. Don't mix up stuff. Don't try to uh, elaborate stories when it comes to Jesus. If you don't know something, I, 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 I may be the pastor by title, but I'm a buffoon. You know how many people come into my office and go, hey, I was reading and I don't understand. Can you tell me what it is? And they give me like, I don't remember where it is, but it's like verse 2 says this. Uh, let's dig into it together. And there's times that I go, I, I'm, I'm not really sure. Let me pray about it. I, I don't know. I, I would love to say that this book and me are, are unison and one in one. Um, no, that's why I read it every day. Because I don't know it as well as I should, as I could. Truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? To be right with God. How am I going to be right with God? First off, I have to believe in His Son completely and with everything I have. Secondly, I need to be truthful. Third, I need to stand on that truth that Jesus was the Son of God, that Jesus came and died, that Jesus arose from the dead, and that Jesus said, I will take you home. Those who believe in me shall never die, but have eternal life. Having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, that guy makes me crazy. I just want to... Ah! Not peaceful, is it? I get you. I, 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 I told you all about the Taylor temper tantrum. My mom used to say that. My dad was very hot-headed. I know I struggle with being hot-headed. I do. I, I just struggle with that sometimes. I need to be prepared for the gospel of peace. When evil comes against me, I am to stand with the strength and courage of Christ, the truth of his word, the righteousness of who he is, and then I will have peace regardless of what happens. You ever think about that? You ever think about the times that you get riled up the most? When you think you're in a battle. I, I've got to fight. Well, you're right. You do. You have to stand firm, if you'd like, on the gospel of truth. Now, is, is the battle to be fought here, here? Is my battle with the atheist that comes up to me, the agnostic that comes up to me and tells me that I'm an idiot for believing in what I believe? No. My battle's not with that guy. Do I think he's wrong? Yeah, I do. But he thinks I'm wrong. So does that mean I hate him? No. It means I'm going to pray for him. I've had atheists actually tell me, don't pray for me. Oh, okay. I won't pray for you. Walk away, dear George. Jesus, please be with that guy. He can't tell me who to pray for and who not to. And I'm telling you now, my God's greater than the God that he doesn't have. I win. And you know why I do that? Because I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm not going to back down. He may walk away thinking, oh, I buried that Christian. He's, he's a hypocrite. He, I've seen what he's done. Yeah, you have. 
<laughs> if, you, if, if you haven't seen, I'll tell you. Guess what? I'm a buffoon. I've done stupid things. I've done a lot of stupid things in 57 years. But I'm going to stand firm on, the, on Jesus. That 57 years has taught me if I'm going to stand firm on anyone or through anything, it will be Christ. In addition to all that, taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now about you, sometimes the flaming arrows hurt. And you know what those flaming arrows, at least in my opinion, seem to be? My past. My past. If Satan wants to really burden me, if he really wants to get me down, he brings up my past. I got a past. I got a closet here on earth. In fact, I don't even have a closet here. I got a warehouse of things that I've done. And Satan will throw them in my face every day. And you know what I do? I stand. I stand. See, you can, you can tell me what I've done in the past. I, I'll admit it. I've done it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, right? I'm, I got truth. I've got my boots of truth on. But that doesn't change the fact that Jesus died for me. That doesn't change the fact that I have been forgiven by the creator of all things. That doesn't change the fact that my eternity will still be with him in heaven. So throw them at me. Yeah, there's week days. There's days that I'm tired or have been beat down all day long and I'll remember something or Satan has a little kink in my armor and he'll throw something at me and it, it hurts. It does. And I'll cry out to Jesus and say, help me stand. My knees are getting weak. Jesus, I'm, I'm about ready to buckle. I, 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 can't, I can't do this without you. And he's like, I know. I love, I love, I love the poem Footprints. I love the poem Footprints. And I know I think I just used this a couple weeks ago, but I, I keep playing that over in my head. I love it because I know when I am weak, he will carry me. I will try to stand. Have you ever been around somebody that they're, they're so bad? I think a dad coming up on a year's anniversary of him being passed, and when he moved into the house on hospice, he couldn't stand, so we had to do everything for him, and I kind of feel that way sometimes. I feel crippled by my sin. I feel crippled by what Satan wants to throw at me, but here's the deal. Christ will help you stand. Christ will carry you in your stance, if that makes sense. See, we don't have to stand by ourselves. We have to stand with him. So stand. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, I think Paul finishes with our weapon. How, how, do we, how do you go to battle? Again, I think of back to, to the days of Taekwondo and Hapkido. That's what I was learning. I finally started to learn nunchucks and like the cool little knife size, I think they were called. And they were so cool. I wanted to learn that big three-sided like nunchucky looking thing. The thing was like three foot long, two different sides. It, we, they had one that was foam and I'd start and I'd go around like this, whack, right in the back of the head. What, what I, I learned from that was you, you've got to practice, right? Whether, whatever weapon it is, you, you have to practice at it. If my weapon is the Bible and I don't ever open the Bible, guess where my weapon is? It's in th th that junk drawer that we all have because we're all Midwestern. So we all have the junk drawer in our kitchen. And that's where everything goes that we forget about. And, and our swords get rusty. And our swords get stuck in the scabbard that we can't even pull them out anymore because we haven't done it, we haven't cleaned it, we haven't refined it. How do I prepare for a battle? How do I prepare to stand strong if my armor's not on, if my sword is not in the ready? I don't. I fail. I get mowed over. I get pushed by the breeze. 
How can I stand if I don't know the one who I'm standing with? How can I stand and be prepared for a battle if I don't know the guy that said, tell, tells me to stand? It'd be like a general from I don't, whatever country walking in right now and saying, you're all going to battle. Uh, no. I don't even know you. I don't even know what country. I don't know what you stand for. Well, here's the deal. You're sitting in church, so you, you know the one who's telling you there's a battle ahead, but how well do you know him? How well are you preparing for the battle? See, the battle is not something that's going to happen next week, next month. It's happening today. It's happening right now. So are you being prepared? You're listening to me ramble for a half an hour, but what are you doing to prepare for the battle? Are you keeping your sword ready? Or is your sword tucked away with four inches of dust on it or you don't even know where the thing's at? I'll be honest, I love the Bible apps. I think they're a great idea, but it's a, it's a cheesy excuse for a lot of people. Well, I read my Bible every day. No, you don't. You read a verse every day because it's sent to your email. That's not reading the Bible. That is, I'm giving God three seconds of my time while I'm in the bathroom. That's not studying. That's not knowing. That's not preparing for the battle. See, if we keep going, it says this. With all prayer and petition, pray, in, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me with an opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I, Paul, am an ambassador in change, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Th- those, those words are for you. Those words were for you. Paul may have wrote them, but they're for you. See, when you put on the full armor of God and you're standing there, it's now time to speak boldly for Christ. It's now time to stake a stand, put the, put the Ten Commandments back in our, our schools, put the Ten Commandments back on the buildings that they originated in. Well, it didn't originate in, but as far as our country is, they did. See, now is the time for Christians to take a stand. Now is the time for Christians to stop lollygagging and accepting everything because what you accept, you approve. If somebody wants to do something that I don't agree with, that's their choice. But I don't have to accept it and I don't have to approve it. See, there's, there's a difference here in this country. We have forgotten that. That we can have two people that can talk civilly and love one another but have completely different viewpoints, worldviews on a lot of things. I will love that atheist. I will love that agnostic. I will love that whatever person you'd like to put in the fill in the blank there. But I will not back down from believing in Jesus. And we may walk away and he says, I'm an idiot. And I may look at him after he turns his back and say, you're an idiot. I'm kidding. But I will not back down. Paul finishes this whole chapter, this whole book with this. But that you also may know about my circumstances, how I am doing. Tychicus, my beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will make everything known to you. I have sent him to you for this very purpose so that you may know about us and that he may comfort your hearts. Virgie Church, peace be to you. And love with faith from God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with you, those who love the Lord Jesus Christ, with an incorruptible love. See, when you ask, what am I standing firm for? You're standing firm for an incorruptible love. You are standing firm in someone that has already paid the price for you. You're standing firm in the one who would do whatever it takes to bring you home. That's who you're fighting for. 
So my question to you today, after all these examples in the Bible, after countless people we've talked about over the last several weeks, are you willing and ready to stand firm for the faith of Jesus? Thomas Munson once said this, Do not yield to Satan's enticements. Rather, stand firm for the truth. The unsatisfied yearnings of the soul will not be met by a never-ending quest for joy amidst the thrills of sensation and vice. Vice never leads to virtue. Hate never promotes love. Cowardice never gives courage. Doubt never inspires faith. Today, what I'd like to ask you this is will you stand firm with me for the truth of the gospel? Will you stand firm against the flaming darts of the arrows of Satan that will come in every direction? Will you stand firm when you are beat up by those that you know and love and will belittle you for your faith in Christ? Will you stand firm believing that Jesus is your one and only, even in the midst of hatred, vile persecution. Will you stand? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for your love and grace. Father, we thank you for the courage to stand. We thank you, Father, that we don't stand by ourselves we don't stand alone we stand with the army and the legions of angels that you have sent to protect us father we stand on the very word that you wrote we stand on the very faith that we have in you we stand father because of you with you father today i ask each and every one here to truly look at their life See where they struggle standing, and I pray, Father, that they would reinforce those with your word. I pray, Father, that their swords would be ready, polished and gleaning for the battle. I pray, Father, that they'd have their armor ready and polished for the battle. And when those flaming arrows come, Father, and it dings and dents our armor, I pray that we would stand on the truth that you have promised to never, ever, ever, ever leave us. Father, today I just pray that churches around the world, people who call themselves Christians, will do this one thing. Stand. Jesus' name, amen.